If you're finding yourself stuck in a cycle of unfulfilling relationships and you're wondering why love is so elusive, what if I told you that it's not about changing your strategy, but it's about making a few internal shifts to your feminine energy? I know this because I am proof of concept. So in today's video, I'm going to share with you the three top traits that women struggle with the most when it comes to being stuck in their masculine energy, what this looks like, the partner that this attracts, and how to take immediate steps to shift so that you can attract the partner you want. Let me start by saying, if you are a woman who likes to lead, who likes to be in charge, this video is not for you. Let me start by saying that feminine energy is the energy of creation, receptivity, and flow. Feminine energy is also naturally magnetic. Feminine energy draws in what it desires rather than chasing. So before we move forward, let me just tip down on receptivity. What receptivity looks like in your dating life, if you're in your feminine energy, this means that when you're sitting on your date, two people are present, attentive, and willing to explore. And when I say explore, we're exploring the connection without preconceived notions, without some crazy expectations. Please take a moment to process what I just said. If you go on a date and the person shows up and you're just not into it, in that moment, you have to learn to make the date a useful experience for you to build out your skill set of staying in your feminine energy. The minute you shut down, you're in your masculine energy. So I want you guys to start understanding, practice staying open. It doesn't matter if this guy's not a match. He's a person, he's a human. Use dating to explore people. Pretend like you're on vacation. You know when you go on vacation and you sit at the bar and you just talk to random people because you're on vacation? You have no motive. You have to really try to stay in that mindset. You're already on the date. You're already dressed up. Your makeup's done. You guys are sitting wherever. Stay open, enjoy yourself, try to stay in your feminine energy and treat this person like a human, you know what I mean? Just two more things and then we'll jump into the key points of the video. Another way to practice staying open and in your feminine energy when you're on dates is your body language. You want to be relaxed, always have eye contact, possibly leaning in when you're speaking the way I do this. Also, you don't wanna have your arms crossed. Try to make sure that your arms are open. Legs should be crossed, obviously, ladies, but you don't wanna cross anything else. It blocks off your energy, it shows that you're closed, it shows that you're defensive. Men pick up on that. And then lastly, you don't wanna dominate the conversation. And this can be a dance because a lot of people aren't good on first dates. Some people are introverts, their communication skills are different. This is when the feminine energy really comes into play because it's a matter of flow. You kind of flow and follow the energy. And the flow is the hardest part because a lot of people are uncomfortable with silence. If the man is quiet and he seems comfortable in the silence, he's most likely an introvert. I learned a lot of this from my older sister. Sit there and be comfortable in the silence as well. Don't feel that you have to fill the space with words. I am very guilty of this. I feel like I have to entertain and keep the conversation going. Introverts are very comfortable with the silence. That is a form of communication. So that's just a major tip, one that I have to work on all the time. You don't wanna dominate the conversation because then you're leading, you're dominating. What is that masculine, masculine, masculine? So when a woman is predominantly in her masculine energy, she is unconsciously attracting men who embody complementary aspects to her masculine energy. Or, yes, it gets better, folks. We will attract partners that align with the imbalanced dynamics that we're projecting. So when you are on dates, just try to stay conscious of those few things. Now, let's go ahead and jump in to the three top masculine traits that most women struggle with, what this looks like, the partner this attracts, and how to change it. So step one is to identify which masculine traits you are sitting in so that you can create change. The top three traits of masculine energy is providing, protecting, and leading. You may be sitting in all three, you may be sitting in one. So let me break down what each one looks like. A woman who is in her masculine energy by providing, whether through financial support, taking charge of decisions or problem solving often takes on the role of provider in the relationship. And this dynamic can attract men who are passive, less driven, not as successful. This man is comfortable 
with their partner taking on the role of provider. And this can result in them not feeling the need to ever step up. Because why? Because you got this. And in some cases, it could just simply attract men that are still finding their way. You inspire them, which is a good thing, but they look up to you. You become a mentor, you become a role model. They take the back seat, they watch and learn from you. This is not a bad thing. This is just why it's a perfect complement to your masculine. The second most common masculine trait that women sit in, this is the one I'm guilty of, and I feel like this is the most common, is the role of protecting. When a woman is in protective mode, we all know that we're hypervigilant, we're overly cautious, we're guarded, because we're taking on the role of shielding ourselves from any potential threats. And unfortunately, the type of man that this will attract. The crazy thing about this one and why I wanna focus on it for a second is because even though our protection mode comes from our own brokenness, of our need to protect ourselves and keep ourselves safe, we are going to most likely attract a guy that is wounded or broken. Listen closely, guys, because they see our protective nature as a source of comfort and healing. They feel safe in our protective shield. Okay, so that is a very important one to pay attention to. However, I'm sure we've all been here too, these are the relationships that can get very toxic and very codependent because you're both living and loving from the wound. <laughs> I've experienced a handful of these and they're usually the perfect match made in hell. So you'll hear time and time again, you don't have to be fully healed to start dating, but you need to have a lot of awareness and be very conscious of your wounds and how they steer your choices and actively be working on your healing every single day. And then the third masculine trait that women sit in the most, that's also the most common masculine trait, is leading. A woman that is in her masculine energy by leading is often the woman that's taking charge, making decisions, and deciding the course of the relationship. She's confident and assertive when it comes to taking control. Again, kind of like the provider, it's going to attract a man that's comfortable taking direction, a man that is comfortable taking the back seat and letting his woman lead. So if you're a woman that wants to attract a man that embodies the top masculine traits of being the protector, the provider, and leading, then you are going to have to do internal shifts within your energy to allow space for that man to come in, attract, and stay aligned with you. And when I say stay aligned, staying aligned is the biggest obstacle. You want two balanced energies to come together where each can feel fulfilled in their individual roles of masculine and feminine energy. The minute the woman moves into the masculine energy, the dynamic shifts, the relationship starts to suffer, and vice versa, when the man gets too much into his feminine energy, women, <laughs> you already know what that looks like, so I don't need to get into that, but it's very important that each person feels fulfilled in their role. So if you are a woman that is in her masculine and is always taking charge and leading, you are going to have to force yourself to sit back and allow your man to take charge and lead, even if he's not doing it right. Unfortunately, this path is a little bumpy because oftentimes men are so used to the woman leading, they kind of stumble their way through the process. And let's say that the woman asks the man to plan more, so she's not always planning. The guy does this and then the woman doesn't like what he planned. And this is probably a really bad example, so excuse me if I offend anyone, but it kind of reminds me of when you have a little kid and they go to school, they're in kindergarten and they paint and they bring you home this hideous painting and you have to stick it on your refrigerator and act like you love it and your refrigerator accumulates over time with all these horrible paintings from your kid but you do it because you love them and you want to encourage them it's all about encouraging the behavior you want right so if you're micromanaging it you're still in your masculine so now that you have the top three masculine traits what that looks like in your behavior and what it attracts i want to dive in to the four top ways to remove blocks that are keeping you stuck in your masculine energy number one is going to be healing heartbreak wounds and the most powerful way to do that is through forgiveness forgiveness will help dissolve the barriers around your heart scripting is more of an unconscious flow of thoughts you just let it flow because those are your unmet needs and i promise you a breakup I went through five years ago, I had 
stacks of these. And as I scripted the same stuff out of my head, the story transformed on its own. It just naturally started to transform on its own and the suffering just relieved itself. It's hard to explain, but I promise you when you brain dump and you get it out of your mind and into the material world, it will start to transform. The second way is releasing the need for control. We all know that control comes from fear. We want to hold on to things with a white knuckle grip to make sure that we never feel pain again, right? So what you can do is practice surrender. This is the hardest one. I don't question anything anymore and it took me a long time to get here, but if I feel that something is meant for me and I try to start controlling it when it starts getting out of my control, meaning the other person isn't doing what I want them to do. Anytime I start to spiral because I'm trying to control and my fear-based thoughts are kicking in, I always take my hands, I look at my hands just to get myself conscious and out of my head and into my body. And I just tell myself, I trust the process of my life. I remind myself that there's such a thing as divine timing and divine intervention. Trust the process and only walk through open doors. If it hurts, that's not the path. Follow the path that feels good. Follow the fun. The third way to remove blocks that keep you in your masculine energy is balancing your environment. If you're in a job that requires that you are in your masculine energy, you have to come home and balance that out. Whether that is going straight to yoga, meditation, going to the park, finding some way to ground your energy. Yang energy is more active, it's more masculine, meaning going to like a Barry's boot camp, anything high energy. Think about that, you guys. When you're in your masculine energy all day and then you go to a hit class, everything that you are doing is energy out, energy out, exerting, exerting, exerting. You have to do something to bring the energy back in. And the last way to remove the blocks that keep you in your masculine energy is protecting yourself without closing off. Feminine energy can still protect herself without being overly guarded. And what this looks like, you guys, is having healthy boundaries. Saying no without feeling guilty. It's a skill set, I promise you, because a lot of people aren't comfortable. For me, the longest time, I would just avoid saying no. So what this would look like is I would go out with my friends and I would want to leave early. And I knew if I asked to leave, they'd want me to stay. So what I started doing was saying I was going to the bathroom and then just leaving and then just dealing with it the next day. Like what an asshole, right? <laughs> Sorry. We're all a work in progress. We're all a work in progress. Now I've gotten more comfortable with holding the boundary, but it's a bumpy path, you guys, because when I stopped sneaking out the back and I started saying I wanted to leave and then people push on you to stay, I would get mean. That's also not the right way to hold a healthy boundary. So that's why I say it's like learning these skill sets are bumpy. You have to find your way through it. Now, when I want to leave, I'm just using the example of a social situation because I feel like this is the most common. Now when I want to leave and I get the pushback, of people wanting me to stay, you have to take that as a compliment. They don't want you to leave because they enjoy your company, but I do say, I'm leaving, I love you, I had an amazing time, I'll see you tomorrow. And I just turn around and I leave. If you leave it in love, you're not gonna get a lot of pushback. I am Angela Jean, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Don't forget I am doing the plank challenge every day for the next 26 days I think we have left. It's a 30 day plank challenge I do every day at noon for three minutes to demonstrate the power of habit building. So if you can't join me at noon and you wanna do it on your own in the evening, it is posted to my channel every single day. So check that out and I'll see you tomorrow.